Hello and welcome to Reasonable. In today's video, we are going to talk about brake dust. Yes, you heard it right, brake dust. Now, you are probably wondering why you should be thinking about brake dust at all, but you will soon find out in this video. In the last decade, we have witnessed the rise of electric vehicles and many new national and international regulations and agreements to reduce traffic-related emissions. Strangely enough, brake dust is something that is not often talked about in this context. While the impact of brake dust on the environment and people is being researched by scientists, it is rarely part of the everyday conversation about reducing traffic-related emissions. First, let's start with a brief explanation of what brake dust actually is. Brake dust is a dark-colored buildup of friction material from the brake pads and iron from the brake rotors. This residue builds on your car's wheels over time and increases the longer you drive your vehicle. Literally every time you use your brakes, particles produced by the rubbing of your brake pads against your wheel are emitted. These small particles are often referred to as PM10 emissions and are harmful both to the environment and to your health. PM10 particles are small enough to get into your throat and lungs, and high levels of PM10 can make you cough, your nose run and eyes sting. People with heart or lung conditions might have more symptoms when PM10 levels are high. The effects of long-term exposure to PM10 are less clear, although several studies suggest a link between long-term PM10 exposure and respiratory mortality. According to this study by the MRC Center for Environment and Health at King's College London, studies have emphasized the importance of combustion-derived particles in eliciting adverse health effects, especially those produced by diesel vehicles. In contrast, few investigations have explored the potential toxicity of particles derived from tire and brake wear, despite their significant contributions to total roadside particulate mass. Quite shockingly, the study concludes that brake dust may cause inflammation and reduce the ability of immune cells to kill bacteria. And to add to that, Dr. Liza Selly from MRC Center for Environment and Health at King's College London and Imperial College London stated the following in an article published in January 2020. Diesel fumes and brake dust appear to be as bad as each other in terms of toxicity and macrophages. Macrophages protect the lung from microbes and infections and regulate inflammation. But we found that when they're exposed to brake dust, they can no longer take up bacteria. And here is a review on the topic of brake wear published by the U.S. National Library of Medicine. This report states that it is estimated that approximately 50% of total brake wear is emitted as airborne PM10. The other 50% may deposit on the road or nearby, or may be attracted by the vehicle. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, exhaust and non-exhaust traffic-related sources are estimated to contribute almost equally to traffic-related PM10 emissions, and brake wear has been recognized as one of the most important non-exhaust traffic-related source of PM10 emission. Furthermore, studies mention that in urban environments, brake wear can contribute up to 55% to total non-exhaust traffic-related PM10 emissions and up to 21% to total traffic-related PM10 emissions, while in freeways, this contribution is usually lower due to lower braking frequency. Now, hearing all this, you might think, but what about electric vehicles? Aren't electric vehicles putting out way less traffic-related emissions than internal combustion vehicles? Well, the simple answer is yes. Electric vehicles are putting out less emissions, even though some or most of the electricity consumed is currently powered by non-renewable energy sources. However, it is important to realize that even electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles with regenerative braking still unsettle particles on the roadway. These vehicles also give off rubber and road pollution, and sometimes even do so at a higher rate than internal combustion vehicles, as electric vehicles are often heavier. To be fair compared to internal combustion vehicles of the same weight, electric vehicles usually emit less particles of brake wear. This was actually described in an article published by the Times of India in June 2023. The article mentions the following. Although electric vehicles contribute less to exhaust emissions, they do not address the pollution caused by brakes and tires. With only 15% of emissions originating from exhausts, even a complete transition to electric vehicles would have limited impact. The real challenge lies in tackling the non-exhaust emissions, which persist regardless of the type of vehicle. 
Now that we've established that brake dust is responsible for a significant part of non-exhaust and overall traffic-related emissions, we will take a look at some possible measures and technologies that could decrease the amount of brake dust that is being emitted. First of all, lighter vehicles simply pollute less. So one way of mitigating non-exhaust emissions would be to disincentivize the use and production of heavier vehicles, although this would probably be a very unpopular measure. Also, reducing the amount of kilometers traveled per car is mathematically a simple but politically a complex measure to mitigate non-exhaust emissions. Such potential measures would probably raise many discussions and political disagreements about personal freedom, the environment, and the general public's health. Nevertheless, reducing demand for private vehicle travel could be established by a variety of measures that increase the attractiveness of public transport and non-motorized transportation. These measures could consist of disincentives for private vehicle ownership, as well as incentives for alternative modes such as public transit, walking, and biking. That being said, let's dive into some technologies and materials that could help reduce the volume of brake dust emissions. For example, brake pads that are made from high-quality components and materials such as ceramic and are lead and copper-free produce less brake dust because of the high-quality construction material. In this image, you can see four different brake pads made of different materials. Number one is a metallic brake pad, and you can actually see the reflection of copper in the image. Number two is a semi-metallic brake pad, which is usually between 30 and 70% metallic. You can see the metallic flakes on this brake pad. Number three is a carbon ceramic brake pad, a high quality material that offers substantial benefits in terms of performance and the emission of brake dust. Number four is an organic brake pad, usually made from Kevlar, rubber, and silica. Organic brake pads generally produce less brake dust than metallic or semi-metallic brake pads, but more than ceramic brake pads. Technically, it would be possible to only produce ceramic brake pads that emit less brake dust than brake pads made from organic or metallic material. However, there is one downside. Ceramic brake pads are much more expensive, and regulating the materials used in brake pads would probably drive up consumer prices for braking systems and automobiles in general. Furthermore, there are new braking technologies being developed that could drastically limit the emission of brake dust. Most of these new technologies are currently still being tested and have not yet been introduced to the general public or on a large enough scale. So what can we conclude? What impact does brake dust have and are there any solutions to the problem? Well, according to the data we were able to find, brake dust is responsible for a significant part of traffic-related PM10 emissions. However, as of now, there are little comprehensive studies linking brake wear particles with adverse effects on human health. So the exact long-term effects on human health are still somewhat unknown. But we are going to take a wild guess that inhaling or consuming brake dust particles through water or food is probably not good for you, especially long-term. While the impact of brake dust on the environment and humans' health is bad news for people thinking that electric vehicles would mostly solve the issue of traffic-related emissions, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. The good news is that there are several measures and technologies that can and are being implemented to reduce the volumes of brake dust that is being emitted. This is particularly happening in inner cities, as many cities worldwide have introduced measures to limit the number of automobiles and even prohibited certain types of vehicles. Thanks for watching this video. Let us know what you think of our analysis in the comment section, and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos and updates.